Good afternoon. My name is Paul Corder. I'm with Perfect Golf Event. And today we're going to do an overview um, of sort of tips and techniques from successful golf events uh, that maybe you could apply to your event. I've been doing this myself for about 16 years. And Perfect Golf Event, we work with thousands of events um, on how to set up their website, run their run their formats, work with their committees, sell sponsorships, and hand, hand, uh, offer contests and activities to attract players and sponsors. So kind of do a highlight film here from some of the best tech tips and techniques. So hopefully uh, you'll find it informative. And uh, don't worry about copying everything down. I'll be glad to send you a copy of the presentation afterwards. So um, basically you'll just be able to sit back, listen, and then I'll send you the notes. All right, so let's talk first of all, you know, why golf events are still effective fundraisers. Well, you certainly can communicate your updates to your, of your mission to supporters, sponsors, and volunteers. That's becoming more important since we didn't have a chance in 2020 to interact in many cases because of COVID restrictions. You get to introduce your organization to guests. 75% of people at a, at a golf event are guests. You can have pre-event activities. I just did a webinar on fundraising activities. You can have things to raise additional money the day of the event. And if you do a good job, you'll have the chance to establish an annual event with revenue going up each year. I work with an event for Cornell University that they've done their event for about 65 years in a row. And we find that if you can get past the first year that and have a successful, good, interesting event that players and sponsors likes, you have a very good chance of coming back year after year and increasing your revenue year after year. Now, let's walk through some of the common elements of successful golf events. And basically, these are things we've learned over the years working with different organizations. First of all, strong committee. That's probably the essence of any good golf event is having a strong committee. You need to have a database of potential players and sponsors. Who are you going to market your event to? Very important consideration. <clears throat> you need a well-executed marketing plan. I'll give you a sample plan in a minute. But you have to have your marketing plan outlined on what are you going to do to generate the interest for your event. Realistic financial projections so you know what you're doing and you're careful with your spending so you don't overspend. Most events fail because they spend too much money in the beginning and they don't get the attendance that they thought and then it becomes a losing proposition. So you have to be very realistic in your budgeting. You want to make sure you're using great technology so people can register and pay online. Have an interesting format so that people say, you know what, I'm, this is great. I don't want to be part of a, a boring four-person scramble where I'm out there for six hours. What do you have for me that's different? And then have contests to attract players and sponsors. Now, the marketing calendar is key, and that's important, and, and I'll be glad to send you a copy. But for my events, um, what we lay out is we have a marketing calendar. It kind of lays out all the different categories of marketing we could do. And then we block in what are we doing each month. So how, where are we doing social media? Where are we doing email blasts? What are we doing certain activities? And you fill that in, and then you look at it and go, wait a second, our event's going to be in August, and we're not doing much in May. We're not doing much in April. What do we need to fill in to have that marketing calendar? You can also set up here so you're tracking what your revenue goal is and then how it's coming in and the actual. Because um, you, you know, if you're trying to raise sponsorships of $100,000, you should have goals saying, if my event's in August, well, you should pretty much have about 50% of your sponsorship commitments by May. So you'd put 50,000 in there. You may put like, you know, 10, 10, 30, and keep putting it up. And then you measure it. And that way, when you're communicating with your committee, you're sharing where the progress is and where you have to turn up the jets to raise more money. So you can list all the tasks, when they'll be implemented, and you can track your activity versus your goals. The marketing calendar also includes a tab for tracking your sponsorship prospects. So you want to say, for example, and if you want to, you should listen to my to my webinar on uh, how to sell sponsorships for a golf event. It's on perfectgolfwebinars.com. Um, so you might put in here, I've got this company, and I think they'll be good as a primary sponsor. And who's the contact? You know, who from the committee is following up on it? What's the status? Maybe I've got someone who's a smaller business that they could be a whole or a pin flag sponsor. Again, what's the status? This, so this sheet should be full of prospects with notes saying, 
They're going to do it. They're going to wait till next year. They're not decided yet. And each time you have a committee meeting, you review this spreadsheet and see how can you move people along. So that's all part of the marketing calendar template, which I'll be able to glad to send you a copy. You want to also focus on the numbers. So this is another template I'll grab to, grab to spend, send to you. It's a budgeting template, and it allows you to plug in all your revenue projections. If you had an event in 2020, you could put in your last year revenue by category. If you didn't, you could put in 2019, or you can put both of them in there. Um, it lets you plug in all your expenses, what they're anticipated to be, and then you click on a button and you say, okay, it looks like we're going to raise this amount of net revenue. And if it doesn't reach your goal, now you have to go back and say, okay, where are we weak? Where do we just need to do to get our numbers up for it? So I can't stress enough that the successful events are using tools like a marketing calendar and a budget spreadsheet to really track where they stand. And they can look for weaknesses that they can attack and get a better result. When I talk about great committees, that's important. You've got to have a great committee. And first thing you should do is think about having an honorary chairperson. So usually I'll find somebody in the community, be a man or a woman who's a business leader, who's recognized, successful, and I'll just make them the honorary chairperson. They don't have to do anything. They might sign some letters for us or they may post some stuff on social media. But when you have somebody with some credit bid that, that's an honorary chairperson who is known in the community, said it could be a celebrity, it adds credibility to your event. And it encourages other people to come to the event because they'll say, you know what, that sounds like it's going to be good. I did an event uh, you know, a, year, a couple of years ago uh, that uh, was for uh, the, in Detroit, and the chairman of the event was Etzel Ford, who was Harry, Henry, Henry Ford's grandson, and he was a, he's on the board of uh, Ford. And we held it at Detroit Country Club, and you can imagine – just by having his name on the term and how many people signed up to be in that event because they said, you know what, we want to be there. That's going to be a happening event. There'll be a lot of business people there that I might want to meet for my business. So that's the type of thing you get when you have a committee chairperson that's got some recognition. Make Stay away from bad, you know, bad committee members, people who just want to sit around, drink coffee, talk about what happened over the weekend. We don't have time for that anymore. Let's get down to business. So you're looking for committee members. It could be celebrities. It could be local media. It could be current supporters. It could be individuals benefiting from your services. It's individuals with business contacts. You want to put together a superstar committee with lots of people committed to it. And business leaders are really good because they have a lot of the business contacts but also people who have been benefited from your services. I do an event um, for an organization that provides financial support to the survivors of people killed in the line of duty. And they do a great job. They pay off their mortgage, put their kids through college. Well, you can imagine that the people who are benefiting from that service are really dedicated about spreading the word about the organization. They're great committee members. They're advocates, and they do a great job bringing people into the event. So you can get a lot of energy from different channels here. Remember, you want to focus all your committee members on two primary goals. You want to have them going after getting potential players, and you want to have them going and getting potential sponsors. And I will tell you, this is one area where committees make a big mistake. And I've been listening, I've attended, and I've listened in to a number of committee meetings. And many times I'll have to stop them because they start talking about the menu. You know, the event's going to be in June, and they want to talk about what kind of hors d'oeuvres we're going to serve. And I said, wait, wait, stop, stop. We don't, we don't worry about that right now. Let's worry about getting some players and sponsors. So your goal as the organizer with your committee is always keep them on point. The point being, let's worry about getting players. Let's get worried about sponsors. You can set up subcommittees. Um, you want to have a big committee. Don't have too many subcommittees, but you might need some smaller committees to have a, to handle marketing, finance, volunteers, food and beverage, the golf course liaison, all of that. But those could be a smaller committees, have them report up to the bigger committee, but still everybody's got to be rolling in the same direction. And that direction is where we're going to get our players and where we're going to get our sponsors, because that's how you're going to reach your financial goals. Again, and I'm going to, I spend time at committees because it's so important. Make sure you've got your committee schedule set up in advance. Um, have every meeting with the status of your revenue. Keep them focused on the financial goals. Put an agenda out ahead of time so you keep people on point. You're not wasting their time. Um, online meetings are really 
I think that everybody's used to now working remotely. So that saves us a lot. Who wants to drive across town, park, go into a building? So for my events, depending on how far out it is, I might have an online committee meeting every two weeks, maybe a little more frequently when we're getting closer. And I don't really need to have a face-to-face -face meeting unless there's something big we want to discuss. But it's more to be frequent, but don't waste their time driving across town and walking upstairs and all that stuff. It just get it focused and get everybody going. I issue reports for my events every Monday morning. I put out a, a thing called the Good Morning Report. And the Good Morning Report says, okay, here's the things we've accomplished last week. Here's who's, Thank you very much to Susan for bringing in a big sponsor. Here's some teams that signed up. You don't have to waste a lot of time, but fa you know, fast, effective, quick communications keeps everybody involved, again, in pushing forward with your event. Now, again, I teach a whole other webinar on how to sell sponsorships, but just a couple of highlights that, I, that are important here for practices. Make sure you've got lots of sponsorships. And so I would say one of the flaws I see in the websites that I look at is people don't have enough sponsorships. And they might have a title sponsor and a whole sponsor and a putting contest sponsor and a lunch sponsor. You want a lot of sponsorships. And the main reason is you're not going to sell them all, but it gives sponsors a chance to look at something that fits their budget. So they might say, I can't afford to be the lunch sponsor, but I'll sponsor the photo frame. So you mean my logo is going to be on all the photo frames, people with the team pictures? Great. I'm in for that. So offer a lot of sponsorship opportunities and also create sponsor packages that sell. And what I mean by that is you want to have some sizzle. Don't want to have, and again, I, I just had a conversation with an organizer who's setting up a new event, and they have a $10,000 title sponsor offered. And what they said is the title sponsor is going to get their logo on the website and their name on the welcome banner. I'm not sure that's worth $10,000 to me. So you have to say to the sponsors, what are you going to give them ahead of time? Logo on the website, branding the email, put a name in the press release, featured on social media. What's going to happen at the event besides just signage, literature on display table, listing of the event program, and then afterwards, what are they going to get for being sponsored? You need to load these things up so these people feel like, wait a second, I'm getting lots of benefit from that. And, and I'll be glad to send you my sample sponsorship package that I use with every event. This is our starting, starting point. I think it's four pages of sponsorships that you can modify the cost on. You don't have to charge 20000 depending on your market. But what you look at when you do it is that when you put Sizzle in there, so let's say a title sponsor is 20000 Again, you might be 5000 in your market. It might be 25000 That might be, I do one here in St. Louis where the title sponsor is 100000 But you say, okay, you're going to get co-branding with the event name. So it's going to be the, you know, the Backstopper Memorial presented by Commerce Bank. You get two teams. You get your logo on all the marketing materials and website. You're going to get reserved parking at the events. When you come up, all your team members, you're going to get reserved parking. You get reserved seating. You're going to get off the tee, tee, to tee off on number one. And we're going to have custom signage there thanking you for your participation and listing all your team members as well that everybody's going to see. Now, what's nice about this, just an example of it, and I'll be glad to send you the sponsorship packages, is a lot of this stuff doesn't cost you anything doesn't cost you to do VIP parking. It doesn't cost you anything to do reserve seating and put them on hole number one. So you can add sizzle to your, to your presentation, <coughs> excuse me, your presentation without spending a lot of money. So what you should do with your committee now and yourself is look at your sponsorship packages and say, what can we add to make them more attractive, especially in 2021 when selling sponsorships may be a little more of a challenge because of what happened in 2020 with the COVID. So let's look at a couple of case studies, some live events and some things people are doing. And I'll give you some examples and hopefully you'll learn some things from it. This was an event that was done, uh, started in 2019. They skipped last year because they uh, because of COVID. They're back in 2021. And they had an event where um, they were having a brand new event, never had one before. They didn't have a committee. They didn't have existing players or sponsors, but they wanted to make $100,000. So they said, okay, what are we going to do to make our event different than anybody else's? And so they did a format, 18 par three holes, 18 hole of one contest. The, the round was done in three and a half hours. They had a shootout for a $100,000 shootout. So the 18 players closest to the pin during the event came in for a shootout for $100,000. The event was sold out. 
they netted, not raised, they netted 106,000 the first year. So that event's going to be strong again in 2021. And the reason they did it is because their event stood out from all the other events that were being offered in 2020 or 2019 when they launched. This is an event called the Islands School Golf Shootout. And this is ideas of people have been taking sort of dramatic differences to make their events spread out. Spread out. So they do 18 par three holes. They have a $10,000 hole in one contest on each par three. So they have 18 $10,000 hole in one contest. They have 18 golfers <clears throat> qualify for a million dollar shootout. So the 18 golfers close to the pin come in, they shoot for a million dollars. Somebody wins $10,000 guaranteed because of the whoever's close to the pin on internet shootout gets 10,000. The event's been sold out for seven years. And the interesting thing part, people are saying, well, this must be some huge organization. It's not, it's a charter school, kindergarten through fifth grade with 52 students. And the reason they do well is because the format's attractive. People want to play in the event. It's become a social networking uh, central point for the community. And people want to support the school, but they also want to play in the event because it's fun and it's sold out. You can't get into the event now without buying a $10,000 sponsorship package. All the individual spots have been committed to for years because of how fun it is. And they also, you know, we help them prepare for professional marketing materials. So they've got great flyers and brochures, very professional way to present it. So again, look at your event, look at your format, look at your what you're offering, and look at your marketing materials all things that maybe you could do a better job, or maybe you're already doing a great job. If you are, congratulations. And that also created, you can see for that same event, all the sponsorship opportunities that created because it had a great format and it's so popular that it sold tons of sponsorships. And I'll tell you, there's lots of events that would kill to have this many sponsors at their particular event. This is a good case study. This is the Backstoppers. This one I talked about, the survivors. It raises a net of $100,000 every year. This I think would be the eighth year. Always raises over $100,000 net. And what they do, and I think this is something you would work with your committee, they really focus on the event day highlights. So they say, hey, before the event, here's all the cool stuff happening. On the course, these are all the cool stuff happening. I mean, they have hole in one contest. We bring a tequila truck out, or tequila, we have a tequila st uh, tasting station. We bring a taco truck out there from one of the famous taco places in St. Louis, Taco Mission. Comes out, serves tacos. We have cigar rolling, we have beer stations. It's really fun on the course. Then afterwards, we have a shootout. Somebody wins $1,000. Um, we have a ball drop using a fire truck from the fire department. It's really good. And what I tell organizations is take a look at your event and white out, take off all the things that the, this event has, and then fill in what you're doing as pre-event. What are you doing on the course? What are you doing after golf that will make people want to play in your event? And that's the exercise you need to go through if you're going to have a successful event. They're doing a fire truck ball drop. It's hundred dollars per golf ball, three for two fifty. The winner gets twenty five hundred dollars. I think last year we raised sixteen thousand dollars from the ball drop. If it's easy to add to your event, if you need details on how to do one, let us know. But ball drops, I don't like to do helicopters anymore because they're cumbersome. But you can do a fireball drop. And then for this event, we add what's called the ultimate super ticket, and for a hundred bucks. They get into a putting contest for a trip to go to Pebble Beach. They get into a chipping contest. They get into the golf ball drop. They get into our golf surprise raffle that I covered on an earlier webinar today. Two mulligans, and they get a 20% discount in the pro shop. So we sell this for 100 bucks. Every player buys it. So it's automatically a winner. Um, you'll, you know, if you sell it 100 bucks, you're going to buy with the number 120 players, you know, you're going to make $12,000 off it. So it's really a good thing to think about for your event. And we can customize a super ticket for your event, whatever you want on it. Make sure that you're using social media. And when I meet, mean it, I'm saying, let's treat it seriously. Let's really get serious. So what we do for event and what other events who have good practices do They'll assign one committee member to each channel. So somebody's in charge of Twitter, one's in Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, and they make sure that there's activity for your event on those channels because everybody's on social media now because they're working from home. They spend a lot more time on social media. And 
what we did for uh, one of the organizers gave me a great idea and I've used it now. We went to the local college and we found somebody who wanted to get business experience to volunteer to handle and teach us how to do social media really well. Because again, we're older, younger people really know this stuff. And this person went in and said, no, no, here's how you post here. Here's how you do this. Here's how you get more hits here. And then it was really effective. And that person got to put it on the resume to say that they worked with a, a local nonprofit on their uh, fundraising golf event, you know, leading the social media charge. So they got something on their resume and we got good results. If you're working with Perfect Golf Event, we'll begin to provide our people. We provide our events with banners that can go on to, perfect golf, to social media sites sized perfectly because if you want to put a banner up for an event, Facebook wants a different size than Twitter, which wants a different size than Instagram. So we'll prepare sets of banners for you to use. Then you can get those out to your committee members and your supporters and say, hey, I know you've got a lot of people you on Facebook with or Twitter with or whatever. Let's get these out there so everybody's seeing what's going on with our event. It's another good practice to incorporate as part of your marketing calendar. And for Backstoppers, final thing we did, we actually did an ad on event. So um, we have the big event called the Backstoppers Memorial, <clears throat> which is played at an exclusive country club. But to get some younger people and non-golfers, we also added another event, which we're doing on April 18th at Top Golf. So if you have a Top Golf in your area, we're just having people come out to Top Golf. Um, we'll have you know we'll be there for three hours. It's beer, barbecue, buffet, lots of contests. And it's got some younger people and non-golfers to come. So it's kind of two levels. We have one big serious event, and then we have a fun again event at Top Golf. Um, we did this uh, in 20, we didn't do it in 2020 because of COVID, but in 2019 we did it. We had about 260 people come. It was packed um, and it was really successful. And it wasn't the same people or sponsors that were doing the normal golf event. It was just an add-on golf event. So I thought it was a very creative way to do it. And again, for you who are signed on late, I'll be glad to send you all these slides. Here's another event that was successful, and they took that concept of uh, 18 par three holes, and it's a Boys and Girls Club down in Polk County in Florida. They were so successful that they did two locations. They sold out the one golf course, so they got a second golf course. So that when they ran their event, they had two full golf courses, all with par three holes. They had some great contests. Uh, let's give you a couple new events coming up, and then we'll wrap up. I know you're all busy. Um, this is an event uh, coming up in uh, June. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a veterans group, and what they're doing is they're doing nine regulation holes, nine par three holes. So they have great hole, nine hole-in-one contests, in, in, uh, including a trip to the British Open because they're honorary chairperson. Remember I mentioned honorary chair people? Their honorary chairperson is Ben Curtis, and Ben Curtis won the British Open. Uh, and that was a big success story when he run it. So he's the honorary chairperson. So he puts his name on it. We'll have a hole-in-one contest for the British Open. They have a putting contest for a trip to the Ryder Cup. They have a men's and ladies division. This is important. A lot of people miss this. You should have a men's and ladies division. Women or golfers are a great asset to an event, and they're underserved. And you want them to feel comfortable to your event, so you set up a ladies division. And then they're having a million-dollar shootout for nine golfers who are close to the pin afterwards. So this is a very exciting new event, but it shows you how you can do things to make your event interesting. I love this one. This is the Vinvu Foundation, and they're, they came to us with this idea, and I think it's brilliant. But basically, they're going to play 18 holes in the morning. They're going to play nine holes in the afternoon. Golfers can play in either round or both. The morning golfer can come back and just hang around the pool till the afternoon, and then they're going to have a shootout, and everybody's invited to a Hawaiian barbecue. I think what a great idea to give people the option to play both or either or, have a full day, and then get together with rewards and things there. I think this is great, and I already have some events that I'm moving to this format because I love it. I won't read all these two. Here's another one, the Scottish Rite Tournament, brand new, adding more par three holes. Um, we helped them put together some part professional marketing materials. Again, I made that point to having really good marketing materials. It's important to support and drive people to your website. <clears throat> and just remember, we talked about it before, what's your event day highlights? Is it a box lunch, golf, scoring, or is it like we did with the backstoppers, all the cool things that people say, I want to take time away from my business or from my family. Well, if I want to do that, I want to have a lot of fun. So make sure your event is jam-packed. 
I won't read these to you. I'll send them to you. These are ideas of different formats you can do to make it attractive and interesting for your event. Um, if you want to get started, it's easy. Contact us with any questions. Make sure your website is set up with Perfect Golf Event. Make sure you've got the sponsorship set up to cover all the contests. If you want to get any other help from us, just call us. If you want a copy of this presentation, if you thought it was useful, um, please just give me a, uh, send me an email to Paul at Perfect Golf Event, or you can send it to support at Perfect Golf Event. So I really want to thank you for listening. Let's have a great 2021. Hope we can help you have a more successful event. Thank you.